Hello there, this is Pete Howard and thanks for coming by the video blog of PosterCentral.com and today's subject is three Bob Dylan concert posters from the Bay Area from 64 and 65 and they definitely have a common theme. They were done, I'm pretty sure, by the same promoter for all three dates so therefore they're the smaller 11 by 17 inch cardstock size and Mary uh, Ann Poller was uh, most likely the common promoter for all three but I'll explain that, um, examine that in just a second. The first poster here is from February 22nd, 1964, at the raging height of Beatlemania in the United States, but Bob doing his folk thing and really garnering impressive reviews. This is what I call a, I'll just tell it like it is, I sort of consider it sort of a, a horrible poster for a fantastic legendary gig. <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, it's, uh, there's, there's no real picture, of, there's no picture of Bob, period. It just has artistic touches to it that you know, it's it's a folk music concert, and there's a headless, you know, folk musician, and um, you can see the lettering there and stuff. It's uh, you know, it's very informative, but you know, what's with that? You know, is there some, maybe there was a San Francisco earthquake when they were setting the type or something? But um, you know, it, it is what it is, and it represents, as I said, a legendary Dylan concert. I mean, he was, you know, obviously. Um, he was so hot at the time in folk music circles in early 64 and uh, the times they are a changing had just come out in January so you know that that title song alone is enough to get audiences all worked up and, and Ralph J. Gleason legendary critic pop music critic and jazz critic for the San Francisco Chronicle gave this show an absolute rave and one of the reasons is that Dylan uh, performed a newly written song, Chimes of Freedom, which would certainly be an anthem of 1964, if not uh, of his entire acoustic career. And Joan Baez, who I believe at the time lived in the Bay Area, I think she did most of her, has most of her life, uh, came out for, of course it didn't matter where they were playing, she was guesting at a lot of his gigs. Joan Baez came out and joined him for Blown in the Wind, and with God on our side, among other songs. So it's a real, real nice feather in the cap of Dylan's acoustic, pre-electric, uh, you know, folk touring. Now, as I said, a very similar design, this one, except we jump forward quite a few months and go from February of 64 to November of 1964 for this one. That last one was in protective plastic. This one's freestanding. You can see it's, in fact, there's the imprint from the, the, uh, the ink from the poster below it on the back there, but you can tell the consistency of the cardstock. And once again, it's 11 by 17 inches, and I'll come in for a little better look. And there's the, um, the Bob picture that was used on the cover of the Times They Are Changing, and there's the information. And interestingly, uh, the, um, the previous poster said, Mary Ann Poller presents. This one has both Ashes and Sand, produced by Ashes and Sand up there, which is a name that would be affiliated with Dylan for a long time afterwards. And at the bottom it says, Mary Ann Poller presents. And the third poster I'll show you does not mention Mary Ann. It just says Ashes and Sand. But anyway, here we have November of 64. Dylan was even hotter, of course. And once again, Ralph J. Gleason raved about the show in the San Francisco Chronicle. And once again, Joan Baez came out and guested with Bob, this time on five songs. So they were really at their peak of performing together at this point. And his most recent album was Another Side of Bob Dylan, his last folk opus, of course, before going electric in early 65. And this poster just generally, it looks like a Bob Dylan concert poster. The other one almost doesn't. And this one with the face shot and everything very much just looks like a standard Dylan window card of the time. Then we jump forward another few months, and of course Dylan in the 60s every few months was a huge change, and here we come to April of 1965 with the third and final 11 by 17 inch cardstock window card. This one obviously used to sell tickets, much more toned than the other two, sunburned if you will, but a really interesting charismatic photo there of Dylan amongst a bunch of cigarette smoke and his name sideways, and then there's the information that you uh, see on the poster, and again, an Ashes and Sand production. When Dylan considered starting his own record label, I believe it was in the 70s, I worked for CBS Records in the 70s, and I think it was seriously on the table, it was going to be called Ashes and Sand Records, but anyway, April 3rd, 1965, now his latest album was Bringing It All Back Home, so he was, you know, singing Mr. Tambourine Man and everything else, and I could be mistaken, but I think most of us watching this and me would have preferred to have gone to this show of the three, perhaps. Um, it's got, and, and getting back to the poster though, it's got the best artwork, I believe, of the three posters. Just that, um, in fact, I sort of nicknamed this Smokey Bob. You know, it's sometimes fun to refer to a poster by just a couple of words if you can. And there's no question, this is Smokey Bob. And if you wondered exactly what he sounded and even looked like on this, 
Later this month, later in April of 65, he would go on a United Kingdom acoustic tour, which was filmed for the movie Don't Look Back. So as you see Dylan in Don't Look Back is how you would have seen him pretty much and sound at this particular show. Now what's interesting is they scan February 64 to April of 65, so obviously about 14 months. Interesting, the ticket price has never changed. 375 top ticket, $3 medium, and 250 low. So despite Dylan's surging popularity, Marianne Poller or the promoters, whatever, did not increase the ticket price, which you wouldn't find today. <laughs> so anyway, there we have it. Three interesting Bob Dylan 1965. Obviously not tour blanks. Each of these posters was designed, was designed for just the show it was used for. So, you know, uh, sometimes that's my mo my favorite kind of poster, and other times I like a good tour blank too. So there you have it. Hope you enjoy the Dylan show, and uh, thanks for dropping on by, and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.